All right, let's do some more practicing um, with selections and learn a little bit more about transforming. So go back to bridge. And if you put your week three photos over here in your favorites, navigate to that. Otherwise, it would be in your downloads folder. And the file that we're going to use is wine glass PSD. Um, double click on that and open that in Photoshop. And if you want to get rid of your cropping lines, just switch to the Move tool. <laughs> so let's look at this image. It looks a lot like our last one, but it's different if we look at the layers panel. We have two layers. We have a white, yes, yay, <laughs> this makes sense. We have a white background layer, and then we have the wine glass floating on a transparent layer above it. So you can see in that little teeny tiny, um, thumbnail here, you can see the checkerboard that indicates that it's a transparent background. All right. <sighs> if you ever want to do transforming on a background layer, if this were flat in one layer, it wouldn't work as a locked background layer. You would have to double click on it and turn it into a regular layer like I did accidentally in that last demo and some of you did. So sometimes if the transform option won't work and you look and you say, oh, I only have one layer, it's a background layer and it's locked, I have to make it a regular layer first before I can do anything. All right, let's go under Edit, Transform, and Scale. Notice two things. The bounding box is only around the wine glass. Why is that? It's not around the whole white thing. Is it only on the wine glass layer? Yeah. Because we're on the layer. This is really important because once we start working with multi-layer files, you're going to be looking at something. Say it's, say it's that last image we just had, but all of the things were um, layers. And you're looking at that Nautilus shell and you're trying to do something to it. And you're like, why won't this work? You have to be on the Nautilus layer. You might be on the coral layer or on the background layer. You have to be actively on the layer that you think you're targeting to do anything. So we put a bounding box around the glass. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to drag to scale it the first way. OK, this is a new behavior, by the way. Up until this version of Photoshop, in order to get something to scale proportionately, you always had to hold the Shift key. Now it does scale proportionately. And if you hold the Shift key, <laughs> you get the other version where you can drag in any proportion. OK? So it's weird. It's now completely changed. The default behavior now in Photoshop is to scale proportionately, which actually is good. Um, if you hold down the Option key and you pull on some of these, scaling from the center point out or in. OK, that's how that one works. Um, if you wanted to scale from the center out but make it wonky, not staying proportions, it would be Option and Shift. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's go to um, Window. Turn on our History panel. So go down to History and take it back to the Open point where we started, where we haven't done anything weird to it. Um, another option would be to go under File and say Revert. And that'll get it back to our original starting point. OK, so it's sometimes tedious to go under the Layer Panel, Transform, and say you want to rotate it and scale it and transform it in like three different ways. You don't want to go through all those menu steps separately. So there's something called free transform. Command T is the shortcut for that. If you forget that, it is um, in the menu under the transform. Right, The next one down is free transform, which is command T. All right. So if you want to scale it, exactly what you're used to doing. This keeps it proportional. Holding Shift makes it not proportional. In Free Transform, if you want to rotate, 
hold your cursor off to one of the top corners, you get your rounded um, arrows, you can now rotate it. So we can tip it over a little. If you want to skew it, you're going to hold down to command and you're going to drag on one of the handles. So notice how we're twisting it kind of like in 3D space. So like the way Star Wars does their words going way back or whatever. So command and holding on to a side bounding box will distort. Shift option command does weird things also. Perspective. Okay. So it's taking the existing pixels and smushing them together or pulling them apart. Notice as I'm making it wider and wider, it's getting really pixelated and looking terrible. That's because it's making those pixels larger and larger. And we're getting the same effect as if we made a file bigger than it should be, physically bigger. We're ruining it by enlarging it. Um, and then there's this other option up at the top. But actually, before we do that, let's, let's um, do a don't accept these changes. So up at your top bar, instead of the check mark, click on the like no sign next to it. And then go back into free transform again. Command T. Now next to your yes check bo box, check mark, and no, there is a warp button. Click on that. And this is pretty cool because now you can take any one of these handles and start doing things to them. These are directional handles, kind of like we're going to learn in Illustrator with our pen tool. And this is what you can accomplish with the warp tool. Um, you can see it kind of put a grid over. Um, this is similar to how Photoshop works when it does this displacement map, which is like um, if you have somebody wearing a t-shirt and you put a logo on it, the way the logo bends over their body is different from if you have a t-shirt laying flat on something and you put a logo on it, right? So to get it to look realistic, you end up doing things like this or using that displacement map where it's, you say, follow the bends and the curves of what this is and wrap our thing around it. So we'll do that later too. We'll use a displacement map. So that's free transform, all sorts of crazy stuff that you can do there. Um, one last thing I want to demo with this. So let's say no to this option. Um, okay. I talked a little bit about canvas size when we did, um, I think, our first week. So right now, the canvas is the size of the background that your photo sits on. And in this case, the canvas is exactly the same size as this white sheet of paper. We want to make our background or canvas bigger so that we can duplicate this wine glass a few times. So we're going to go up to Image, Canvas Size. And depending on how we last set this up, I have it set at relative, which is fine. Um, if we unclick relative, we see that the width is three inches and the height is six. I want this to be um, nine inches wide, but I want all the new canvas to go to the right of my wine glass. So I'm gonna hold my anchor point right here at the center left spot so that everything pushes right. And then I also want it to extend my canvas in white, not in black. So from here, I'm going to say white on that down arrow. So I want a bigger canvas in the background. So nine inches, push it to the right, white background, OK. Now we can see I have a much bigger canvas. And my wine glass is floating over on the far left side right now on a transparent background. All right, make sure that your glass number one is the layer that's highlighted, not your white background layer. And we're going to grab our move tool. <clears throat> and it's already positioned on the left hand side, so we actually don't need to do that. So over in our layers panel, at the top right, we have that more information panel. We're going to click on that and we're going to say duplicate this layer, duplicate layer one says, what do you want to call it? We're going to call it glass two. If you didn't get that, if it just added another layer right here and it was called glass one copy, you just double click on the name glass one copy and rename it glass two. All right, we're going to do that um, 
Actually, we're going to move it. So glass two is now highlighted. Yep. I was able to extend the canvas, but I can't use my move tool to actually navigate it. You need to be on the glass there. Yes. Why do you want to move it? I don't understand. You see. Well, we, we didn't use it. I said to grab it, but we haven't used it yet. But you do need to be on the glass one layer and tell it to go in here and say duplicate layer. Okay. So right now we have an exact copy of glass one sitting exactly on top of it, which is why you can't tell it's there. But it is. It's right there. So using our move tool, we're going to start pulling it over to the right, but to keep it perfectly level and not go up or down like this, we're going to hold shift. That's going to pull it out and just bring it over here and then let go. So now we have an exact copy of it sitting next to it. We're going to do a free transform on this one. So command T. <clears throat> And we're going to scale this one down. If we wanted to do it at an exact percent, we could come up to our options up here. And we could say, let's do a 60% version. That was pretty small. Let's do an 80% version. Notice because of the lock in between the width and height, it automatically scaled it proportionately. And it scaled it 80% both ways. And we'll say, yes, that's fine. You can bring this down to the same level. And let's make one more copy of this. Instead of doing a duplicate layer, we can do an option, drag out to the right, drop that down. That made a layer three or a glass two copy, actually. We option dragged instead of doing a duplicate layer through the layers menu. And then let's transform this one down 80% also. <coughs> and then move it in line with the rest. So those are three um, exactly equal proportion versions of the same glass using the free transform tool.